So hello and welcome to Wheel Life, the video diary that helps you to understand what life is like living with an electric unicycle. In this episode, I'm going to give you every answer that you're ever going to need to beat anyone in an argument if they think that you shouldn't be allowed to ride your EUC. So let's get started. I'm going to need this. They're illegal. You're breaking the law. Now, I once had somebody shout this at me while they were jogging in the street. And I did quickly reply, well, so is jaywalking, which is not strictly true here in the UK, but it did make me feel good. But I wish I could have gone back and had a conversation and tried to convince them to change their point of view. The argument would have gone along the lines of, well, have you ever broken the law? Now, even the most pure people would probably admit there's been a time where they've driven slightly over the speed limit or even stolen some office stationery. But if they do claim to be pure and they say they've never broken the law, you could ask them, well, have you ever carried a stepladder or a plank of wood in the street? They might not know, but there is a Metropolitan Police Act of 1839 which makes it an offence to carry a tub, a hoop, ladders, wheels, poles or planks on a footway. Or have you ever been drunk in a pub? I bet they don't know about the Licensing Act of 1872, which states a fine for anyone who's found to be drunk on licensed premises, or the Policing Act of 1839, which says landlords are forbidden for permitting drunkenness. Now, as I said in a previous episode, the laws relating to the use of an EUC date back to 1835. They're out of date and they have to be challenged. If we just blindly follow old-fashioned, out-of-date legislation, then the following rules must also be obeyed. You are not permitted to fly a kite in a public place. But you don't see many adults running around snipping children's kite strings and calling the police. <clears throat> It is not permitted to slide on ice. Right, when I was growing up in Yorkshire, that's how we got to school. In the summer. <coughs> in Florida, it is illegal to fart in public places. Now that law dates back to 1800 and it's still not been repealed. Eight, nine, eight. <laughs> <laughs> and finally. Did you know that in Spain, it is illegal to build a sandcastle? So ask the person in your argument if they agree with any of those pieces of legislation or which ones they think need to be challenged and updated. Then ask them what gives them the right to decide which law is right and which ones are wrong. Now if they agree that law needs to be updated to take into account new technology and advancements in society, and why wouldn't they, then what gives them the right to say that we should not be pushing back on legislation relating to the use of EUCs? Argument one, move on. can't ride an EUC because they're dangerous. Well, the truth is, so is a kitchen knife if it's in the wrong kind of stabby hands or if it's been used incorrectly. So let's look at some statistics to see how dangerous EUCs really are. Now, it's difficult to get an accurate figure of how many riders there are around the world, but it's estimated to be anything between 80 to 120,000. And that number is growing rapidly. I've also done some research to find how many EUC-related fatalities there have been, and I can only find one case. That gives EUCs a fatality rate of 0.1%. So let's see how that compares to other sports and other activities. Now, sadly, the number of fatalities in the UK alone last year for cyclists was 141. Over the last four years, the number of deaths of cyclists in the UK has dropped below 100 on only one occasion, and in that year, it was 99. In the US, every year, around about a thousand people die on bicycles. We should be marching on Downing Street in the tens of thousands to complain about the use of bicycles. But we're not. Paragliding. One person out of every 752 will die every year. Every year. Why aren't we screaming for this to be banned immediately? Here in the UK, motorcyclists make up just 1% of the traffic on our streets, but they account for 20% of the fatalities. In 2020, the year when we're all supposed to be locked down, there were 285 deaths of motorcyclists on the roads in the UK. 
In the US, 300 people died from falling off a stepladder last year, and around about 19,000 people every year die from slipping in the shower. So as you can see, there is absolutely no evidence to suggest that EUCs are any more dangerous than other forms of transport, other hobbies and sports, or household acts. However, it is difficult to win the argument if you've just crashed into somebody or run over and killed their dog. So make sure you're behaving nicely and you're guaranteed to win the argument. Time to move on. Now if you hear this one, you might be in a footpath or a place where there are pedestrians. So try these. Oh, I am really sorry. Was I going too fast? Now, I am making an assumption here, and that assumption is that you're not going too fast when you approach pedestrians, but you are being sensible and slowing down. So that way, you wouldn't be going any faster than somebody on a bicycle. So you can say, would you be upset if I was riding a bicycle? So if they say yes, and they would be upset if you were a bicycle, you can point out that actually you take up far less space than a bicycle. No more space than somebody on foot. And would they have been upset if you were either a pedestrian or a jogger? Probably not. Argument one, thank you very much. And perhaps they're still not happy. It could be they've got an issue with the fact that this is electrically powered. So you could ask them what are their thoughts and views on the use of electric bicycles. Point out to them that in the UK alone, every year, 50 to 60,000 new electric bikes are sold, and those numbers are increasing. Before long, the majority of bicycles on the cycle paths and roads are going to have some form of electric power. If they want to argue that electric power is the issue, that ship has already sailed. The argument's been well and truly lost. It really is time to move on. So what about if you come across somebody who thinks you might be causing damage to the environment? Well, yes, look behind you. You probably are causing there to be a tread mark in the dirt. But think about it. If you were riding a bicycle, there'd be two marks in the ground. So you were twice as environmentally good as a bicycle, if that logic follows through. If you think about it, the amount of tread hitting the ground at any one time is about the same as a diameter as a cup of coffee. Now, assuming the person you're talking to has got two feet and is not hopping, then that's causing less damage than a pair of shoes. Now, if that still doesn't work, ask them how they feel about people in wheelchairs and should they be allowed to use this environment? Because they've got four wheels. If they say no, point out they're being deeply discriminatory, you've won the argument and the moral high ground, and you can move on. Oh, cock. And what if none of that works? It turns out you're in a conversation with someone whose own family thinks is a five-star a-hole. Well, it's time to bring out the big guns and point out to them that their overreaction to a new form of transport is entirely predictable and only to be expected. Did you know, for example, that when bicycles were first invented, people were genuinely frightened of them. Doctors, in fact, came up with a condition to scare people away from using them, and they called it bicycle face. And it was said that, and especially for women, that the unconscious effort of trying to maintain one's balance tends to produce a tired and wearied and exhausted bicycle face. Now, EUC riders know all about that. When the first steam trains were invented, critics feared that women's bodies were not designed to go at 50 miles an hour and that their uteruses would fly out. Others suspected that any human body might simply melt at high speeds. Towards the end of the 19th century, a couple of laws came into effect here in the UK and in the US that required drivers of new vehicles to have somebody walking in front of their car waving a red flag to warn people of the oncoming danger. Now, those laws were repealed within a couple of decades, but they stand now as a reminder of people's absurd overreaction to the development of new technology and especially to new forms of transportation. So then I guess it's perfectly understandable that people are going to have an overreaction to technology they don't understand. It doesn't mean the technology is wrong, it just means their response is laughable. If not now, then certainly in years to come. So having embarrassed the a-hole into submission, the argument is comprehensively won, he's got no more to say, you're a legend, we can all move on.
Well, that's it for this time. I hope you've enjoyed it and found it of value to you. Let me know in the comments below if you've ever had an argument with someone that you couldn't win. And collectively, let's come up with the right responses. And don't forget to smash the like and the subscribe. Every time somebody watches this and doesn't subscribe, a unicorn dies and nobody wants that. So until next time, stay safe and I'll see you again on Wheel Life.